Uh, right now, I am a client services analyst trainer, and in that role, I support the admin staff at the elementary schools with their student systems and ministry policies. Tell me about uh, what the people are doing out here today. They are out here sharing their voice and speaking up for our, our fundamental rights as Canadians. Um, not being able, or sorry, let me back that up. Having that right taken away by someone who spent so much time worrying about passing a bill than sitting in a conference room and hashing out to negotiate a fair settlement. We're not asking to be rich. Uh, we have gone through, our group of people have gone through, when negotiations happen, we're the little guys. We're the ones who only get the little wee bit. We're we, not teachers. We're not teachers. We don't get the same salary that they get. Like, I don't even make $30 an hour, and I had to have specific qualifications for my job. I had to go to post-secondary for it. But the thing is, because over the years, whenever we had a contract renewal, the amount they gave us was so minimal, and if you remember, we had Bob Ray days where we our wages were frozen. And if they had come to the board fairly even back then we wouldn't be here now but the problem is with inflation after COVID and I, I admit COVID was a sad thing and everyone not just us but everyone in Ontario and Canada is now facing high costs on almost everything you purchase and like we can't can't afford it to buy groceries like I had to cut my grocery bill this week I might become a veg vegetarian but the whole thing is, is our rights are being taken away from us. We're, we're not allowed to stand up for our rights and argue and explain why we need an increase and a fair increase. We're not asking for 15% of our current salary. We're not asking for 6% of our current salary. We just want something close to the cost of living so that we can afford to eat, so that we can afford to pay our utilities and if we can do that then when we go to work with the students that we care about we don't have those financial stresses in the back of our mind and that whole emotion is not with us when we're helping our students we're free to focus on their needs their safety their security the secretaries have to um, once the kids get off the bus and they're on their way to school those students are now our responsibility and the ministry mandates a safe arrival program which means we have to take attendance as our tool to ensure if that child should be at school or should be elsewhere and we and that has to be done in a hurry can you imagine if a six-year-old that was supposed to go to school on the bus and didn't arrive can you imagine the call that that secretary has to make to that parent and the fear for that parent like it's not just we don't sit at a desk and look pretty and, and open the door now because we have the self welcome program they do a, a lot more than what people realize like we support the students the staff the community other employees like they always say the custodian and the secretary or the hub of the school that we always know what's going on yeah what about, what about, uh, and again, I, I, I know might, I went I rampant wrong, there. But, but I mean, what about, Lecce said that they were asking for 50% more. No, that's false. A false. false. That is false. We that's were not false. asking. Senator False said you're false. not. Yeah. We're we not did asking not ask for 50%. 50%. We're asking for a loony, a toonie, and a quarter. That's what we're asking for. We're asking for everything else to be held where it's at, really. We're not asking for a world. Our EAs, our ECWEs, early childhood educators, we're asking for them to have a half hour of prep time like teachers get. They are actually teaching classes just like teachers. Why are they not getting prep time paid for? It? These girls and boys are going, men and women are going home and doing it on their own dime to teach. Everybody else doesn't work for free. Why are we? That's what it's at. We are working for free. We are upset. We keep taking cuts and cuts and cuts and it's showing we're taking cuts. People are doing two jobs. 
kids realize people are tired. You go into a classroom and you have to deal with kids and you've been up 16 hours working two jobs to feed your family and you don't get to see your kids because to put food on the table, you're working two jobs. People are tired. Give us something that we can spend time with our families and be in a good mood. We put a lot of face, false smiles on our faces to deal with the kids that come in because they deserve a smile. A lot of them don't have smiles at home and the only smile they see is from us. That's so true. That's, what is it, how did, are you nervous? In other words, and again, I believe that this is quote illegal. Like, is, are people nervous about that? You know what, illegal or not illegal, we have to stand up for what is right. Not just for us, but for the kids. Lecce talks about the kids and how they should be in school. You can right, put kids in school, but if you're not giving them the right support, what are we doing? We're not helping them. We're putting them in a room for daycare. That's not what school's for. Schools are there to be taught. Kids are meant to be taught in schools the right way, with the proper support and the proper guidance. They're not getting that now. People don't know that. What's the main stumbling block, or is there one main, or what's the... The main know? stumbling block is he won't negotiate. He's gone beyond negotiation. He hasn't even bothered to sit at the table that often. And when he does sit there, he comes in with foolish offers. The same offers that he's done, the same offers he wants to throw at us now, it'll probably be 1%. What's 1% gonna do? Eight cents a day, I think it is? I'm not a mathematician, but eight cents a day isn't a huge, eight bucks a week. What is that gonna do for anybody? Look at the price of gas, look at the price of groceries. And you folks, you want it, like people say, and again, if I can word this right, people say there's so many jobs, if you don't like it, go to another job, but you guys love the job you're doing and that's why you're doing this. We love the job we do. We love kids, we, I, I'm a custodian. I feel what I do put something into the kids life they can come to school in a clean work atmosphere where they can study and sit at a desk and not worry about getting germs our my guys that i work with all work hard they're dedicated employees and they do it they have kids in school i had kids in the school system we do what we need to do but you know what it's getting to the point where our retention is low we are losing employees crazy and the retention we're not keeping but we can't hire either there's no one filling these spots because like people say, well, they know what they got into. No, these people know what they got into. I've talked to a lady here today, she's an EA. She gets beat up at school and she comes back the next day. She puts on motorcycle equipment, cross cut motor equipment to deal with kids. She comes back. I don't know too many people that get in a fight and go back in and deal with the same boxer again and get beat up again and you can't throw punches. That's where this school system's at. We need support staff. Teachers need support staff. The boards need support staff. How long are you prepared to be out for? I'm prepared myself personally, as long as it takes. I believe my fellow brothers and sisters will follow and be out there as long as they need to be. This is serious. This needs to be fixed. It's not just our rights, it's everybody's rights. Like this is a precedent that has never happened in Ontario. And if we, can't fight, then everybody loses. Private sector, and don't forget, we're the examples for our own children and for the children we work with. Like, if we don't stand up now, who's gonna stand up for their future, right? So, it's not just us. This is the first time that we have put on, I've been with the board 30 years, and this is the first that we have ever been this strong and it's time and we just want we don't we don't want to be rich we just want something fair and by the way we have never striked QP has never striked that's one thing everybody says oh we're striking again we have had a work work to rule work to rule we never strike since the amalgamation we have never striked the last time we strike was before the amalgamation and I believe it was in the 70s not since so QP has never striked we taught it is our time to fight and have our voices heard it's time for the kids to have their voices heard we need to do that for them in our future that's what we're here for
Last question, how many people are here today and uh, do you think the message is getting through? We've had many people here today. I'm gonna tell you, I, I'd be guessing and I'd be false in telling you a number, so I don't wanna give you a number. Hundreds, I come in, to say hundreds though? Oh, hundreds, easy, hundreds. Easy. I'm gonna tell you there's well over a thousand people been here. Yeah. I can tell you that there's well over a thousand people. The horns haven't stopped going up and down the street. People are dropping off donations. This isn't bought. This is all donated to food on the ground. People brought pizza, sandwich. I have many families walking here. They've realized they bring their children so they can see the movement which needs to take place to give them a better education. And like my friend Lynn says, guess what? It's not just about QP. This is about a nationwide problem where he's legislating us back to work without us being able to set our voice out. We need to speak. We need to be heard. People have that right. We have a charter for a reason. Let us use it. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me what you got going on today. Hi, I'm Laurie Ann Petty. I'm with QP 1453 from PVNC. We're out here in front of Doug Pacini's office protesting their use of the notwithstanding clause and telling us that we must be back into work and accept their contract. They are not coming to our table to negotiate with us. And this is what we're asking. We need them to come to the table and negotiate with us. Tell me about um, how many people were out here today? Somebody said over a thousand? We have had over a thousand at the top, at the peak when we had our switch over. Um, regularly between the two shifts, it was over a thousand. But now with our shift, we've got, I would say we've had about three, 400 people come in. We've had families coming and bringing us food and water, Tim Hortons. They have been very supportive of us and we are very grateful. We've had the nursing union, we've had the SEIU, we've had uh, the transit union come and support us and telling us how they are so happy that we are fighting because they know they are next on the list. How long are you prepared to stay out for? We're prepared to stay out until Doug Ford and, and Leachy come to the board and talk to us and do some fair negotiations. Is there a main stumbling block or is it, what is it? The biggest stumbling block is we need a living wage and he's not willing to meet us even halfway with a living wage. We have members of our collective that are working two and three jobs trying to make ends meet and we can't have that. You're working seven to eight hours at a school and then you have to go somewhere else and work. You don't have family time, you don't have anything. I would like to invite Stephen Leachy and Doug Ford to come to one of the schools and pre perform one of the jobs that we do and see what we have to deal with day in and day out. They won't come down and see that. They're not seeing what really happens inside a school. Do you think they're trying to break the union? definitely trying to break the union. I really believe they are. And there's many unions that are saying they're so proud of us for putting up the fight and that they will be right beside us because their uh, contracts are coming up too. Is it scary that this is illegal? Like any retaliation that you're worried about? Well, really it's not a strike, it's a political protest. So if they wanna, it's not illegal, we, can, we have the right to protest and this is what we are doing. And uh... This is, is this a one day thing or I guess do you know where it goes? We next? don't know where it's going to go. Hopefully over the weekend they will come to the table and talk and we can get some things ironed out.